it's a frosty morning good morning youtubers and vansters so we're on episode number 13 i think and i've had quite a few delays and distractions so i've actually done a little bit of work and i haven't managed to film and do any edits so i'll just take you through what i've done so far and what sort of my next steps are going to be the weather's been really cold we've been below zero a few days so that's kind of limited the jobs i could do can't be using any glues or any bonding products when it's so cold the risk that they won't set properly and you'll have problems further down the line so i kind of put off the installation of the window in the side door until it gets warmer if you haven't yet done so please subscribe i need to get a 1000 subscribers to make this channel a success ring the bell to get notifications for when i post again also check me out on my other social media shoma underscore shoots at instagram and at facebook i'm busy working on a website we'll be launching that soon so thank you very much for the support Both back doors are now finished. They need a little bit of detailing around the edges still because some of the paint has like seeped into the wood a little bit. So I'm just gonna let it dry completely. Eventually I'll sand it down. Um, I might still do another trim around the edge, but basically everything's been painted black now with a metal paint sealed all around the edges of the doors with seeker flake. The wood is treated with an oil, which again, I might do a few more coats later on. And yeah, just a bit of detailing, but generally it looks pretty good and both doors are done now. So that's awesome. Something else I did, I sanded this whole piece down here and I've just primed it with a metal paint as well. That'll need another sand and another paint because it was just absolutely trashed and scratched and full of rubbish. So just clean that up a little bit. On here in the garage space, I have closed up all the little holes with a wood filler and made sure all the edges are sealed up. And then I've painted it with a rubberized paint. It looks pretty good. You can really see where the garage space is going to be defined now. So the bed's going to go over this and this is all going to be garage space. I'll have a water tank here, batteries. I'll probably run a little bit of seeker all along these edges as well once everything's been painted just to make 100% sure that when I've got wetsuits and surfboards and stuff in here that no water ever gets inside there and under there. And I've also spent a fair bit of time doing bits and pieces of insulation and putting battens in position. So as you can see here where the bed's going to sit, I've only got one sheet of Celotex against the side of the van and over here. So it just gives me a little bit of extra length here and I should be able to fit a standard length bed, which is 190 centimeters into this void. Here I've got two sheets of Celotex because basically the line you want to go to is where the wooden beams are going to be. So I've got all that Space to insulate um, so I've done two sheets here and two sheets here and basically where I can I'm just gonna put two sheets of Celotec and fill everything up with banding foam and with either earth wool or with a recycled plastic insulation material my windows are absolutely solid now they're sealed up inside and outside they're not going anywhere the glue set I'm not getting any moisture inside so that's really good news and I've started putting beams here so that I can start boxing it in and building frames so I still need to put a few more beams up so that I can start kind of fixing stuff to it and then the next Next step really is finding my electrics so that I can yeah just start getting the electrics and the wiring run what I'm doing is I'm kind of having the van like in steps of insulation now different things that I've done and I can kind of monitor it and when it gets really damp again I can see if I'm getting any moisture through here when this is wet when the ceilings wet what's going on and I can sort that out and resolve it before I finish boxing everything in so it's maybe not a bad thing but to have kind of different stages of insulation monitor it and make sure you know you're not gonna have any problems so I actually had kind of a crazy idea. Um, I always wanted a way to get from the back cab up front in case, you know, at night if something's dodgy is going on, I don't want to have to go outside to get into the driver's seat and drive away. So I wanted a quick access. And I'm going to have my cooker and a workspace over here. So I was thinking of doing, you know, a little aperture here that you can climb through. But I don't really want that because it's going to be really crammed here anyway. So what I was thinking is to actually have a little step here, be able to climb up and then actually have like a little hatch up here that goes down. So you literally like pull yourself up and then you shoot straight down into the um, passenger seat. I'm just going to try and figure out if that's possible, if I can actually cut a little aperture there and make a little hatch or not, because that would be really awesome. Then I've got this is storage, sliding door here. I can, you know, store jackets and sleeping bags and stuff up there, but then I can just shift that and shoot forward. So I really hope that that works out. I think that's going to be a really good idea. So just once more, what I'm using for the insulation, these stick pins go onto the metal 
like that. Then the Celotex board, 25 millimeters, gets stuck over the top like this. And then you just use these little pins over the pins and you press them down and that's how I'm fixing the board to the metal. Then I'm using earth wool in the gap and expanding foam as you can see there. Then I close everything off with aluminium foil, this stuff, and I use aluminium tape on all the edges everywhere so that absolutely everything is closed. And make sure that every hole is filled and that all the metal is covered with tape so that there's no, no exposed metal which gets cold, which touches the inside and causes condensation and causes moisture. a piece that's already done and closed off this is where my bed's gonna sit against on this bed frame so that's all nicely sealed off already something else I started to do is to build a framework for my tongue and groove and everything to go against eventually so I've started with a few of the ceiling beams and a few of the side beams I still have quite a few to put in but what I'm doing basically is I'm doing the framework I'm putting a bit of insulation in but I'm not completely closing it up yet because the next big thing to do is to get all my wiring done and to run conduit so we're going to have the batteries here and i'm going to run most of the cables up along here and down this side and from there they can kind of feed out to the lights and to all the appliances so i'm faffing around a little bit with insulation and with putting beams on but not too much because i need to leave quite a bit exposed still to get the wiring done different kinds of woods for the framework because this is kind of like the highest bit of the van so what you want is that the wood goes just a little bit proud of this for the tongue and groove to come over it to maximize the space obviously you don't want big fat planks that are going to waste your space and put more weight in the van so these are perfect as well and for the side here they just kind of go proud of the highest point down there and these are 19 millimeter by 32 by 1.8 meter so these are absolutely perfect and then these are just slightly bigger the same ones i used for the floor and they are 25 mil by 38 mil by 1.8 meters so those are ideal as well for the framework I think that's going to work really really well i'm going to make sure i've just got enough everywhere to put tongue and groove and enough to fix cab cabinets to later and so on make sure when you drill into the metal um, that you also countersink these screws and get them nice and flush so that once the tongue and groove comes over it it sits nice and flush against it Part of the frame is built so i actually went for beams that were the same thickness the thinner beams to keep flush along this line i've just started here i've reinforced it at the back there i've used these little 90 degree angles to fix to the floor and that's pretty bloody solid so just going to keep going with that until there's loads of structure there so that i can build a shower around that where i can't drill through the wood into the metal and i want to drill these two pieces of wood together i'm going to be using this tool here it's a pocket hole jig i ordered it off ebay the link's below and it's a really really useful tool so basically um, it comes as a set with this clamp you get this drill bit you clamp it onto the wood and then you just drill through there and you get a hole at an angle that you can then screw two pieces of wood joined together at an angle it wasn't expensive so i would definitely invest in one of those So I've just done a bit of a mock-up over here, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, under the rim I'm going to have to fit different size blocks to make sure that this um, is filled in there all the way around. Then I've got a basic framework in place and um, this is just to kind of show where the tray will then be sitting. So I'll have marine ply all the way up here and all the way along the side here. And the shower will sit more or less 
like that which is pretty good it's pretty much where I estimated it to be um, when I did my mock-up before you can kind of see the old line there so that's really good and then I'm gonna have space for my plumbing and so on later so yeah I think that's that's really good so I moved into this little bungalow in the evenings when I finish with the van or actually while I'm still working with the van trying to make the most of the sunlight I need to chop some wood and start the fire up so that I don't come into a house that's freezing cold just getting the fire started and then I'm heading back to the van where I've actually got the neighbor helping me diagnose um, some of the battery issues that I've been having lately. Um, the battery's got a drain somewhere so we're just trying to figure out what's been pulling a bit of drain on the battery and in any case I'm going to get a new battery before I hit the road but it would just be nice to know where it's losing power from and I'm also going to be installing a main switch on the battery so that I can just power it off completely so nothing can drain it and when I do get a new battery then it'll just go in and nothing can sort of damage it so just doing a bit of diagnostics right now pretty interesting learning quite a lot so hopefully next week will be a little bit more productive pulled out every single fuse in the van so there's one here there's one over here by the handbrake and there's one up front in the engine bay and we pulled out every single fuse and just tapped the connection on the battery over there to see if there was a little spot so in theory if there is a spark, it means that there's a drain somewhere. But it just kept sparking, even though we took every single fuse out. So the only thing we did find was one fuse that had gone out, and that was for the light inside the van. So that's quite a good result, actually, because it's kind of switched off all the light. And there was maybe a loose wire at the back, so that might have caused the battery to discharge a bit. So basically, I think the reason why the battery's been discharging is, first of all, because I've been starting it a little bit too much but I haven't been driving enough put enough juice back into the battery so that's reason number one reason number two is that it's just been really cold batteries don't like the cold and then there was a loose connection on the negative of the battery also when we disconnected some of the lights in the back to wire in the reversing camera one of the wires was touching a bit of the bodywork of the van so that might have been drawing a bit of power out basically we couldn't really find anything that was 100% draining the battery. There might be a few factors that have caused this. Did a voltage drop test as well on the battery. So put a meter on the battery, started the van. If there's a drop of nine volts, that means that the battery is pretty cooked. So it didn't do that. And while the van was running then, we turned everything on, screens and radio and aircon and everything. And it was still putting out like 13, 14 volts. So pretty good. So I think the battery is actually all right. So what I'm gonna do now is I've ordered a switch, a main switch to put onto the battery so basically you just turn that off and then if there are any drains they just can't suck the battery dry so I'm gonna do that in any case before I hit the road next year I'm gonna get a brand new battery just to make sure that it's hundred percent solid um, so I don't need to worry about that and I'm just gonna make sure that that one's always topped up I'll be driving the van then anyway it'll be warmer so it, it should be alright so I'm gonna use this old battery to get me through the winter get me through the refit um, I'll just charge it up from time to time gone through all the fuses so know where they are know what they do so that's good as well just familiarizing myself more and more with the van learning about the electrics and so on so it's it's really good 